In this video, I'm going to take a look at the last couple of games I've made and talk about the, the projects I'm mulling over at the moment, the things that may be coming up, um, and talk a little bit about how I'm trying to decide what to do. Um, it's probably going to go long as a video. I'm going to try and keep it down. Uh, the most recent game I made was called What Do You Think It Is? Uh, I made it for the Ink Game Jam over three days. And it was totally not the project I thought I was going to make. Um, before that, I made uh, a different game called Hamer's President. And um, I made it as a warm-up to the ink jam. I made it exclusively in ink. It's the first game I've made where I've just written a story in ink and then hit the publish to HTML button, fiddled a little bit with the CSS, but then um, just had a really simple, um, the, in, the, automatic, the, the default interface. No? Uh, I can show that. This is my Itch.io page, and Hamer's President is the penultimate one I did. I just, um, let's start that again. Uh, I just may, I just released an update to it today, a very small update which changes the beginning, gives a little intro section because um, somebody, I, I watched somebody play it, or I, I introduced somebody to it the other day, and they didn't get what was going on. Somebody else also commented that they they couldn't work out what was happening. So I made this little intro which states, I hope, uh, very clearly what's happening. Uh, I'm not going to play through it, but I'll, I'll just click on a couple of options to show you what it is. So, hey, Ms. President, um, written in ink, uh, you are the president. Okay, you're giving a press conference, I suppose. You're answering questions from the press. Very good. You can't for the life of you remember what this press conference is about. Oh, all of that, that's the new introduction. Ms. President, can you give us some words on the current trouble in Peebles? Invent something fast. You've been taught how to do this, how to invent nice words fast. Time and time again, they've drilled you on what you're meant to say. But when you open your mouth, in a second, you've no idea what'll fall out. Bzzzt. But tell me, Ms. President, what are you planning on doing about it? And I'll stop there. So, um, you click on options and you get new questions, although they're not all questions. There are, there are other scenes in here. Maybe if I click through, uh, we're only going to get questions now. Okay, this is a tiny little story. It was Friday, 8.36 a.m. A little late for breakfast, but you were eating a bowl of clam chowder and thinking about what you'd read in the papers when your wife bustled in with a mop, wearing an apron of all things, and told you to get out of her war path. And there are choices. Um, so, this this game is an attempt by me to address one of the principal problems with creating multiple choice narratives, branching stories, which is that it spirals out of control really quickly. If you if you create a narrative with branches, every time you have more than one option, you double or triple the paths that you've got and very quickly it comes out of all control and you will never finish the story because each branch is a new story to write and you branch a branch and da, 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 da. so how do you deal with that I think there are lots of techniques and other people have um, spoken a lot more in depth about this kind of thing but so thinking about one way to do this I want to present you with options and I want them to feel different um, I want there to be different effects from options, but I don't want to create so much work that I'll never finish the story. So the way that this story works is it actually consists of nine 
10, but one of them's different from all the others. Nine separate little individual stories. And within those stories, there are lots of choices. You start off uh, with three choice in each one, and then as the game goes on, more are generated. Most of them have around about nine choices in general, and lots of them branch. So some of them will split into two sections. Each section will have a different set of choices. Some of them are fairly elaborate, and they'll split multiple times. But never more than three times. And most of them will just kind of split once and then end. And then it takes you to another random one in this list of, of nine. Every time you come back, um, any choices that you, everything, no, every time you come back, there will be changes to it. So in this one, um, you're always eating breakfast in the morning and your wife is always there. But the time changes, what you're eating changes, what your wife is holding and wearing changes. Um, and the options that you get also change. If you use an option, it'll never come back and new ones will appear. Um, and that's that was the whole point of writing this thing, was like making a thing where you get lots of choices, they feel different, story feels varied, even though it repeats... It, Hopefully it doesn't get boring. Um, and I can, but I don't have to write a million things. I have to write nine things. Ten, because one of them is special. Um, and I think it sort of works, except that randomness is a problem. There's no linear story here. It is a story about being the president this, this one is the special one. This is the, um, you get to make a sandwich and uh, you get lots of choices of what to put in your sandwich, but it's the same every time. You just get different, you just make a different sandwich every time. Um, so yeah, but it's not a narrative and it can't have a narrative arc and it can't, there's no way that it can feel like your choices like change the world state, right? Your your choices affect the responses that you get, but they don't make any long term changes. And I'm I, I'm happy with this game that I made, but I think that the the failing that it has is is that none of your choices are or feel significant. The fact that the the stories come back, even though they've changed, they they look the same. So, it's um, it is the same. You know, it's the same. Um, you get given the choices that you rejected the first time, the second time you see this thing, and so every time that happens, I feel like what. You didn't click on these the first time. Why are you going to click on them the second time? You're going to have to because I'm making you. Um, but that doesn't feel good. Anyway, um, I think this game is good and you should go and play it. It's uh, You get to make sandwiches. Uh, it's weird. Uh, you get to be the president. You get a lot of stupid questions which you don't know how to answer. I think it's a good game. Um, I've started writing a follow-up to this. Like it was a really nice experience to um, to write that thing relatively quickly. It probably took me about three days of work to write the whole thing. Um, and just be able to click that publish to HTML button and get the thing is really cool. Also, you can play it in your browser, which is a big advantage, I think, that... What I'm seeing with my games in general is people don't like to download games. Um, and the jams that I've participated in, the games which uh, have to be downloaded get played less than the games which don't. So um, that's another good reason to, to do it in HTML. Um, so uh, I'm working on the, the follow-up to that. Let's see. This is in a very early stage. Um, and it's 
It's not a game yet at all. It's not even a story yet. But So this is a story about a girl who only has one leg and who gets a magical shoe which lets her jump anywhere she wants. And this is a little intro about uh, her getting the shoe and stuff. This is the kind of thing that's... I don't want, I don't want a big block of text. It's not going to happen in the final thing. Um, but that's the story. And uh, you try out your shoe. Uh, I'll read it. So Hattie, that's the protagonist. Hattie laced up the shoe, crouched and released. The jump was enormous. She sailed over parked cars and back gardens, supermarkets and football pitches. And finally she landed in the wildlife park, right next to the emu enclosure. That was amazing, thought Hattie. I better jump back home and tell mum and dad. On the other hand, those emus are pretty cool. You can jump back home or you can stay and watch the emus. Um, so, that's it. You kind of jump in around the direction. You land in a place. And then you have a little experience with the emus or whatever. Um, stay and watch the emus. Hattie watched the emus, though. I emos? Why not? Emos. They were pretty cool and interesting. But she couldn't really give her full attention to the emos because she kept thinking about her parents, who would probably be worrying about her. She should probably jump back home, really. Jump back home. Uh, Hattie bent her leg, just like before, tensed her muscles, and made a leap. She bounded up into the air much higher than you or I have ever jumped, but then came back down again several metres away. Oh, that didn't work, thought Hattie to herself. Maybe the shoe needed to wait a while before it would be ready to jump again. Uh, ooh, the, the, the grammar's wrong there. Hmm, I don't know what happened there. Maybe the shoe needs to wait a while. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, I guess I should find someone who can help me get back home. Or maybe I could find some friendly animals who will let me sleep over. Um, in this game, that's going to be kind of the crux of it. You jump to places, you have some sort of experience or interaction there. And then you have a choice of trying to find a way back home, which might just be calling your dad and asking him to pick you up. Or maybe you can convince someone to let you sleep them over. Sleep them over. Brilliant. Uh, ask around, see if you can stay over. And uh, this right here is where this is not a game, right? <laughs> because I've just written a big long thing. I increasingly, no, no, that's not true. Um, this is a good way to write, I find, is uh, without all of the choices and the variation necessarily. I'll come back to it. Anyway, cut a long story short, she uh, has a lovely time with a family of muskrats and uh, she phones her dad to say what's happening and uh, dad's a bit worried about her, but fine. Uh, the next day she uh, gets up and uh, her... A shoe works again, so she jumps back home, etc. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's way too much dialogue at the moment. And then another day passes. Where should she jump? And every day you're going to be presented with this list of places to jump to. Right now, it's uh, her best friend's house, uh, her, the wildlife path, or she can jump at random. And... Um, this list is going to get longer and longer. It will start off longer than this with a bunch of places that she knows that she's been to before, her best friend's house, the park, whatever. And then as she finds more places, it will get more and more populated. Every day you can jump where you want. And I want to write it, hopefully, where if you want to, you can just keep jumping back to your best friend's house and playing with her and doing whatever that um, story is. Um, but there is a game and the game is to explore more and more places, discover more story and stuff happens and there, you know, so anyway, this is like the, the follow up to Ms. President, um, just because it's going to be just text and, uh, I'll present it in the same way with the default HTML uh, output of ink, but let me introduce you to my uh, lovely handcrafted uh, progress tracker. I'm trying to get really good about tracking progress on things. And um, mm, I did it for the first time really 
carefully with Ms. President and it was invaluable. So this is my progress structure for this. I roughly scoped out how many places I need. Uh, I've started writing the places. Um, I know what some of them are and don't know what others are. And I've got 7% of the thing written so far, which is not very much for the amount of kind of thought I've put into it and stuff. And I feel like maybe this is much bigger, more complicated story. No, this is a much more bigger, complicated story than was president. And maybe, maybe I should shelve it for now and find something a little simpler to work on. I don't know. I don't know. But this is, this is one thing. How long have I been talking? A really long time. Um, okay, I'll try and like speed up a bit. Um, let me show you a few other things before I talk about other stuff that I'm working on. So the game that I made for the Ink Jam is this one. Um, So, there are spoilers coming up for this game because um, the theme of the game, the theme of the game jam, which was announced when the jam started, was it's not what you think. And I'd been planning on writing a game very much like Ms. President, which I was pretty sure I could do in three days without a problem. And um, that was going to be what I was doing for the jam and then the idea of it's not what you think was like oh, rang, made a light bulb go off and I was like oh, I could do something a lot more ambitious than that um, and really have it fit in with the theme I'm going to and then the jam was really hard <laughs> I didn't have enough time to do it I'm really pleased with what I've done much more pleased with the first and second thirds of it than the final third. I didn't run out of time, but the final third was, was it was impossible to get what I wanted for it. So anyway, I'm gonna play through a bit of it now, and this is a big spoiler. I would be really happy if you went and played it before watching this, because I think it's good. I was really happy with making a game in three days like this. Um, anyway. Uh, so, it's a choice adventure. You get two choices, you get some text. It's the morning of your eighth birthday. It's a game about your birthday. You awake as sunlight streams in through the gap in your curtains. Lie in. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. There's no hurry. Uh, read a comic. There's a comic stashed under your pillow. You pull it out and start to read. It should be exciting, but you can't really concentrate. What about your presents? Get up. You roll out of your bunk bed and land gracefully on your beanbag, like a ninja. Can't see if they're presents? Maybe you should wait though until mummy calls you down. Mm, okay then, I could play. Yeah, presents will wait. Uh, no, not the encyclopedia. Play with your trains. You send a locomotive hurtling over a bridge. You know, there are presents downstairs. Make some tea. You get the tea set out and start making tea for your dolls and Teddy. Playing is fun, but what about your presents? Play with the ball. You're not really supposed to play with your ball indoors, even on your birthday. Have you thought about going to see if there are any presents for you? You should see downstairs, okay. You leave your toys and open your bedroom door. Okay, and that's the... That's it. <laughs> that was the idea. It's not what you think. It's not a text adventure. It's something more. Um... It's this walking simulator type thing. Kind of similar, I guess, to Elodie, the game I made for the jam before last. Three jams ago. Um, um, and so I wrote the story and then I started making this and I built this um, environment really quickly. Um, this is your bedroom. You've got a bunch of toys that um, appear in the story. There's your encyclopedia, your tea set, your train. The train is incidentally the only reused asset in the whole game. I borrowed that from the LED game. Uh, it's a doll's house. 
And... Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, there's a door that blocks you off when you, you can't go back in your room. I don't know why I did that. And this is a really early thing I did, is I wrote the code for, like, triggering doors to lock behind you. There's a, there's a trigger volume here in the corridor. And I was going to use it a lot, and then I never did. I wrote this one, like, at the fairly early on the first day, and then I forgot it. And I don't remember why that's there. Who knows? Um, so, I'm going to kind of stop playing for now. Um, but this was super fast to make and really quite fun. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. It's a very simple, flat style. But I think it suits my... What I like modelling, the way I like to model stuff. Um... And it made me really happy to uh, to make this so fast. The, it changes through the game. The rest of it gets more complicated and weird. But this bit's cool. So, this is like game idea number two that I'm going to talk about. I'd like to make something more in this style. Um, with text-based stories that you, that you read and then um, environments that you explore shaded more or less like this I've, and I've started I uh, started work on that I've written I don't know uh, a thousand words or so of it and um, started modeling just a tiny little test scene the reason that I have to maybe not do that possibly is that um, it's kind of less mechanically interesting than the last game I showed, the, the jumping game. Mm, because it, it is just reading a story and walking through an environment. Now, I, I don't think that's bad. I'm quite happy with games which let me explore an environment and read a story while I do it. Um, but I also want to stretch myself. I've already made a few games like that. Um, the Hattie game, the jumping game, is more interesting. It's got more stuff going on underneath. So we'll see. Um, okay, I don't know um, how functional this is, but we'll see. Um, what was I saying? Right, I started this game um, tinkering with an idea for it, even before I was president, with the initial like uh, impetus being wanting to create something that's a non-combat roguelike. Using the word roguelike in its most loose meaning, I know that people get cross about what that word does and doesn't mean, um, I don't really care what it means. <laughs> what I mean when I say a non-combat roguelike is just like um, a game where you have a randomly generated level that you explore and stuff happens and um, you have choices to make and you can win or lose, but there's no you're not fighting in it. And in the end, I don't know even how roguey this is going to be. Probably almost not at all. Um, but well, I might as well like hit play and show you how it exists right now. So right now, this is all really in a test phase. But this is my idea. Oh, incidentally, not Seed Ship is not the title of the game. Uh, this The impetus... For this game also the thematic uh, inspiration for this game is another game which I want to show you um, called Seed Ship by a guy whose name I forget I think he's called John yes John Aliff um, so this is a really cool and clever twine game where um, not made by me I didn't make this. Somebody else made it. Uh, can I make this bigger? Yes, that's probably better. Um, 
Um, I'll just do the intro. Uh, and when they knew the earth was doomed, they built a ship. Less than an ark, more like a seed, dormant but with potential. In its heart, a thousand colonists froze in frozen sleep, chosen and trained to start civilization again on a new world. To control the ship, they created an artificial intelligence, not human, but made to think and feel like one, because only something that thought and felt like a human could be entrusted with the future of the human's race. Its task is, is momentous but simple, to evaluate each planet the ship encounters and decide whether to keep searching or end its journey there. The ship's solar sails prop propel it faster and faster into the darkness, and the AI listens as the transmission from ground control fade and then cease. When all is quiet, it enters hibernation to wait out the final stage of its long journey. After millennia of slow travel, the seed ship AI awakes. Hope, hoping against hope, it trains its receiver on the direction of Earth's sun, but it is as silent as any of the other myriads' distant stars. Save for the thousand frozen colonists cradled in its shielding and life support systems, the human race is now extinct. And then the game proper starts. And in this game, you are playing as the ship. You arrive at planets, you scan them, you find out what it's like, you can investigate if you want, or you can move on to a new planet. And it's the idea is to find a planet that's going to be good for your colonists, colonists but as you do it, um, various systems fail and um, you lose col colonists. The choice you make about where to settle uh, is difficult and important. And it's a cool game. It's cool. Um... My game is not the same, but it kind of takes that as his inspiration. You're on a seed ship, although there are no frozen colonists on this. This is uh, more like a data ship. It's got uh, information storage. It's got um, DNA encoded onto hard drives, future hard drives, and systems for growing new people from nothing. And, um, and that's what it is. You don't play as the ship, though. You play as a tiny little um, repair drone. And the, the ship is flying through space, uh, arriving at different planets and scanning them, doing all of the stuff in the background that you do in the game Seed Ship. Um, and having problems and systems are failing and you are running around inside the ship trying to repair those systems, trying to keep the ship running. You're the smallest cog in this machine. And I just think that would be fun. Um, so right now this is all like super early and it's just kind of got tests and things this is tests of my parser for doing color, color on words and that kind of thing. I don't remember what that does. Oh yes, it's just like uh, I have the, some code for giving you stats. Uh, and um, so this is, like I say, very early days. This is your, your little drone. This is a map of the mm, the level of the ship, the part of the ship that you're in right now. These symbols do mean something, although I can't remember what. They represent the different types of rooms that you can encounter. You have an inventory of different stuff. You have a some stats, which show how good you are at doing stuff. And um, you, I honestly don't remember what I've implemented. I think that the blue rooms do stuff. So every time you go in a new room, you get this like, description of the room and there will be stuff to do right now there isn't very much because I haven't written very much uh, and the blue room is the only one where that happens so you go into a blue room and right now there are just these two options for, for things you can do 
But the idea is to kind of produce an atmosphere here of this decaying, falling apart ship. Um, it's all steam and rusted metal and ancient machinery groaning. Um, and that'll be presented to you in the in the descriptions. And then in rooms you can search for stuff and fix stuff. You want to collect parts so you can use them in the future. There will be little stories to follow. This is like a hint at something. There is something wrong here. The, the floor is smeared with a long street of biological matter. The vats on the aftward walls have all ruptured. The readouts displays gibberish. Strings of corrupt characters interspersed with little tiny pleas for help. I'm planning on these little like fragments linking together and eventually you'll uh, discover these little mini stories within it. It's again another like look at how to sort of randomly generate these stories with but put some narrative in there, put some threads and things. And if you try and move on, you can't um, because you've got to make a choice first. Uh, I don't remember if this works. Uh, yes, it does. So you get this uh, this thing. Uh, so you found a thing, and now you can move to another room. Uh, at least the way I'm doing it right now, you once you you get into a room, you get your choices, and then once you're done, whenever you come back to that room, it's it's dead to you. It's empty. There's you've done everything that you that you can. So there's a finite number of rooms on a on a floor um, and that's that's basically it as far as that's as far as I've got in developing this um, there will be uh, a whole bunch of um, other stuff happening so when the the ship in the background is going to planets and things are happening and things are breaking in between you making your actions. And I haven't implemented any of that. Um, so that's another thing I've got on the go. Um, there's no real specific reason not to just keep cracking on with this. Um, except that I recognise that there's a lot of writing that needs to go into it. Um... But that's cool. Uh, the reason I haven't been working on it is because I had the jam and then I wanted to do a follow-up to Miss President. I wanted to do something simple, which is the, the Hattie game, the jumping game. Whether I really want to do that because it's also a lot of, uh, it's a lot more complicated than I initially thought it was going to be. I don't know. I, I'm suspecting that this game or the Hattie game is the one that I'm going to focus on right now. Um, and I think that's kind of all I want to talk about, right? There, there are a few other little minor projects uh, in the background, but I've already been speaking for, for way too long. There's also Excuses, the game that I started in February or something like that, a long time ago. And it's... I don't know what's happening there. It's so close to being finished. Really, really close. And I just really stuck on it. Um, I've got this music system which doesn't really work. And then the last time I went and uh, had a crack at it was just after the, the jam, like a week ago. And um, I fired it up, uh, started looking at the music code, played through it once to see what was going on and spotted a bug, a simple bug with the text parser. And I went and fixed that bug and pressed play again and I destroyed the text pastor and it wasn't working anymore. Um, and then I spent like two hours <laughs> trying to work out what was going on. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I want to, I really want to finish that game. I think it's cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know when it's going to happen. Um, okay, uh, if you've listened this far, thanks for bearing with me. Um, 
we'll see which of those uh, which of those ideas uh, is the one that gets my focus right now. I'm not certain um, really which one is the most the most um, well. Which one is the best one to work on? But we'll see. Um, thank you very much for watching, and uh, toodaloo.